What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know what goes into the day another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos you want me to talk about tomorrow? And today is Thursday, February 22nd. That's right, we have a very rare and incredible video today for, well, two reasons. Number one, I usually don't release Thursday videos. The only reason why I did was because yesterday I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally went live on YouTube Live when I was watching the Nintendo Direct, which was really fun. I got to talk to a lot of you guys here on YouTube Live while streaming. But yeah, that was an accident. I do have something up my sleeves. I kind of jumped the gun there on accident, <laughs> but expect to see me in the future. The second reason why today's video is going to be pretty awesome is because I have a legendary guest for you guys today. He's the legendary concept artist RJ Palmer. Have you ever seen any of these pictures just floating around the internet? He's the one that's responsible for making it. Spoiler alert. It was phenomenal, okay? So phenomenal, in fact, that I'm about to shoot off the news about everything else just really fast, okay? Just so we can just hop into the interview, okay? I'll let you guys what you need to know just really fast. A lot of things did happen. For example, the Nintendo Direct Showcase, okay? That happened yesterday. And in my opinion, it was absolutely booty. I'm not even going to name all the games that came out because I don't really care. The two that you probably might be the most excited for was Super Monkey Ball. I think there was an announcement for, like, Killer Instinct that you can play on Nintendo Switch Online. And then a lot of people like the return of Epic Mickey, which was a game that a lot of people used to play back in the past and now there's a remake for it however one announcement that was in the nintendo switch online japanese announcement was the release of mother 3 only for the japan switch online okay where is reggie when you need him <laughs> <laughs> this is something that gamers have been waiting for an extremely long time is for us to get a local release of Mother 3. And now that they've announced it, it's only available in Japan. It's making some people big baby rage mad. Reggie needs to come here, localize it, bring it over to America because they don't realize it. But we want to play this game so freaking badly. For those of you guys who have no idea what Mother 3 is, okay, it's the sequel to a very popular RPG franchise, Earthbound, starring your boy Ness. That's right. If you play Super Smash Brothers, that short bald head dude with the yo-yo that I've said many times over the years that if you main him then you just don't like butts and can't be trusted well the opposite version of him lucas the gang gang himself the main character of this game bringing in another story that's supposed to basically twist your heart into pieces just like almost all earthbound type games i'm excited for it i want to play it i would like for it to come to japan if you have a nintendo switch that is already in japanese or you switch to a japanese nintendo switch that you can play it i suppose but just just bring that gen over to america so that we can play this asa also what you guys really need to know is elden ring okay the DLC trailer got announced and people were extremely excited for it. You can pre-order it right now and it's called Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. It should be available for you guys to play June 24th, 2024 this year and it looks absolutely amazing and brilliant. There seems to be a lot of new bosses that will kill you in one hit. A lot of different fighting styles that you can now take from. It looks absolutely glorious. This game is one of the games that I played and I only got like 75% of the way through it, right? I had a really fun time with it. It's a Souls-like, it's the type of game, if you guys don't know what Elden Ring is, that you go and you fight monsters, and usually these guys can just murk you. <laughs> <laughs> immediately all right you just die it's one of the most popular games in the entire world next to like grand theft auto 6 that's going to be coming out next year so yeah get ready for this if you guys want some elden ring save some time on your calendar for june at the end of june you guys will be able to play a lot more elden ring but last but not least in gaming news okay splatoon 3 side order dropped last night at 8 o'clock p.m eastern 8 30 and i was playing it on twitch.tv and it is so good okay if you guys don't know and i've been talking about this on the channel for a while splatoon 3 side order is the offline dlc where you basically go into a castle it's like a roguelike where you go up and you got to get to the top of the tower then every single floor you have to fight monsters and it gets harder and harder and harder this is similar to like a concept like the game hades or similar to like slay the spire that i played with the card game however in this one you get to use you know like shooting mechanics you get to be the squid format and i played it all last night and i would have kept playing it if it wasn't for the fact that i had to get some sleep wake up and make today's video so after i'm done with today's video you guys can catch me at twitch.tv slash inferno omni playing this game because this is the only thing that i'm going to care about for the next couple of days i'm just going to be playing side order it is so fun it's so good it's challenging i was scared that it would be too easy you know like because being by nintendo so i thought it was gonna be like baby type games nah it's actually pretty challenging <laughs> it got me just frustrated enough that made me want to kind of like rage but like good enough that makes me want to get better we have a huge freaking update when it comes to the youtuber ruby frank that's right the woman who basically did heinous things to her kids using her family vlog channel she has officially been sentenced to 60 years in prison the long and short of it without making your stomach just basically churn this morning or afternoon whenever you're watching this video is that she abused 
her children. Both physically and mentally, she tortured her children under the concept of some type of extreme parenting, but it was just literally torture. And the only reason why this officially came to light was because her youngest son somehow managed to escape the house. And when he escaped, he had duct taped around his freaking ankles and hands. He was literally being held as a prisoner in his own home. What's also important to note is that she had an accomplice named Jody Hildebrandt, who was basically the mastermind of the situation. As she came into this trial, she talked about how Jody was the person who brainwashed her and influenced her to have these dark teachings when it came to, to basically mistreating her kids and telling her nine-year-old daughter to jump into a cactus and run bare feet on the hot pavement. But yeah, both of them are getting the exact same treatment of 15-year sentences, four counts of child abuse, and they're gone for 60 years. That number may go up or down later on down the road, but that's just the sentence that's been issued right now. I'm usually not about this energy, but I wish these two a very fuck you very much, and I hope they rot in jail. Elon Musk, we gotta talk about this dude really fast, okay? If you guys don't know, he's been doing treatments on the brain of a person and putting a neural link chip in their brain. They were testing actual humans to see if we can do things with our mind and then create, you know, technological advances there. And apparently, okay, according to Elon Musk, says the first Neuralink patient can now control a computer mouse with their thoughts. Okay, what I think is kind of interesting about this concept, by the way, is that whenever we hear about Neuralink, it's always just through Elon Musk. Like, I wish it would be like a third party person kind of looking into this and then telling them objectively what's happening, but we always get fed this information through Elon Musk. The joy of connecting with your loved ones, browsing the web, or even playing games using only your thoughts. This is made possible by placing a small, cosmetically invisible implant in a part of your brain that plans movements. I don't know, I'm looking at that chip and that don't look small, right? Small, I'm thinking like a microchip, like give me something that's like the, less than the size of a penny. That junk can be, you know, count, it, it, nah, that looks big enough to be invasive to my brain. That junk looks like it might decay after like 20 years and it mess me up somehow. The device is designed to interpret your neural activity yeah. so you can operate a computer or a smartphone by simply thinking about moving. No wires or physical movement are required. Mm -hmm. By participating in the PRIME study, you'd be helping to redefine the boundaries of human capability. So yeah, they're looking for more recruits, <laughs> more warm bodies. I think I might've watched too much anime or cartoons growing up because the first thing I think of, like being able to do things technological with my brain or move things with my brain is what if you make weapons? Right. You take these bullets that have like devices in it that you can activate with your brain, then you can move the devices and activate it. And now you can have you can be like Magneto. <laughs> you can control things with your brain. If you can control a mouse with your brain, then that means you can control many things with your brain. And then we're going to go into a future where everyone man, part of me wants to see it. A part of me feels like I kind of want to die before it happens. <laughs> But I think it's pretty inevitable for this thing to happen, okay? Humans are always trying to push the boundaries of evolution and technology, and it's just been a matter of time before they're gonna start going into our brains and trying to insert technology into that as well. So it's, it's just gonna happen. Also, what you really need to know very quickly and very short news and something that's gonna make you big baby rage mad, probably if you're into uh, Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond, yo. Not Squire Mario said, DC denied peak. I hope that they regret it. And there was concept art, more than that later, because we talked with a concept artist today, pitched Batman Beyond, the animated film, by director Patrick Harrapin and PD Yuki Demers. Before we pitched, they warned us there was absolutely no way we can do a Beyond movie, but they loved our enthusiasm. We pitched the outline for the entire film and what started as a never turned into a maybe. And everyone, 221,000 likes. It essentially looks like the Spider-Verse, but with Terry McGinnis's Batman Beyond, and it looks absolutely disgustingly brilliant right now spider-verse is kind of like looked as like the peak a peak of when it comes to like animation and movies like right now in 23 and 2024 like the next spider-verse movie that's going to come out is probably going to blow our minds when it comes to animation styles so this feels like it could fit in the same category and but you know do it a little bit differently it looks delicious it looks gorgeous and we haven't really got a super really good animated batman in a very long time on the big screen just a couple of flops the most recent batman was pretty good but still i feel like batman is not getting the justice he deserves this was something that i hope would come to camera and maybe they will bring this to light we shall see speaking of what you shall see grand blue fantasy versus rising receives peak today if you guys want to see this okay 2b is in a fighting game and um um I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just show you the pictures. <laughs> Brother? <laughs> I 
I know y'all saw that frame. That is so un <laughs> Oh my god. They're, they're, oh my god. They knew exactly what they was doing with this one. They knew exactly what they was doing. Cooking. That's what they were doing. They were cooking. Well, yeah, that's 2B. It's super cool. 2B is just one of the most iconic video game characters of all time in terms of being created from Nier Automata. And it's actually just a great game all in all. But yeah, her character design, her the concept artist, whoever created her should hopefully be known for of all the time because yeah, they use her in everything now. And last but not least, guys, before we get into today's main crazy interview, guys, we have more Niji Sanji drama. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> all freaking week for the past two weeks okay this freaking niji sanji corp this vtuber agency has just been getting worse and worse and worse and worse every single day something seems to pop up and the new thing that seems to be popping up has to do with this person who's basically being racist and that's that's my shtick i'm the one that's supposed to be being racist because team fry hasn't won any splatfest however adm has said if you want to keep talking about niji sanji there's some new drama with uki violetta now i don't know if it's uki or yuki violetta but apparently <laughs> <laughs> they are out here being racist towards white people. A couple of you guys sent me this super cut here. It's a five minute video. I'm not going to watch, but just straight up five minute of unironic, you know, r racism not placed because Team Fry is not winning. Huh? How dare you? Fun super cut of every time Uki Violetta was weird about white people. This pattern definitely makes it feel like a not so subtle racism. I doubt he makes these kind of jokes about other races. You guys want to watch a couple of minutes of a VTuber being racist because, uh, yeah, I I do. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Surprise, white man does the bare minimum. You're a fucking psychotic, crazy white man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, okay, I haven't played this game, but let's just be real. Like when you come to some of these video games, a lot of them feature a crazy, psychotic white man, okay? But <laughs> something about the delivery of that was just hilarious. Let's continue, okay? Does it does it get worse? Is he just poking or jabbing or is it, is it becoming a bit inappropriate? You know how when like white people kiss? <laughs> I don't. What do you fucking mean? What? Like in the movies and stuff, when white people kiss, it's like they look like they're in pain. They, it looks like they like, don't want to like, do it. Like, like fishes going on to each other and just sucking their faces? Not even fishes. It's like... <laughs> It's worse than fish. <laughs> you know what? White people's hot dog sucks in more way than one. I'm just going to say that. Okay, I get what's happening. I know what the type of person this is. Okay, this seems to be the type of person that is constantly using white people as the butt end of jokes. Like nonstop, has got that secret, like, uh, I want to joke about and tease and make fun of white people nonstop type of energy. I know a lot of people are like this. This is the same type of feel like who think it's okay to do this because you can't be racist towards white people. It's this new concept that people are creating that it's okay to to poke up because you know white people technically are punching down so it's it's okay to just be racist and make fun of them in public because some kind of logical loophole that says that racism has to do with the oppressor yada 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 five more minutes to go it seems like he's the type of person to constantly degrade white people and use them as the butt in the joke a little bit way too much like a once-off kind of thing sure i see people doing that with all different races all over the place but five minutes of just non-stop like <laughs> If somebody can create a freaking supercut of all the times you've been racist towards one group, my guess is that, uh, and I think it's a bit of a problem. For me, as long as the racism is funny, it's comical, it's humor, then hey, let it go, okay? You can be a comedian and chunk it up to comedian, okay? You gotta be funny, but it seems like if you do it too much, even if you're being funny, then it starts to become a, it just becomes a little sussy, a little bit weird. Whereas with I, I'm an equal opportunity racism, okay? I would never discriminate and my discrimination against races. People are saying, this is so weird, WTF. The, I grew up in a dangerous place, so I'm always on guard is a weird excuse. I grew up in South America, I live in Europe. Trust me, you get used to very easily a good change. It's race envy. Uh, he never shuts up about them. I honestly think he just wants a white man to give him correction just based on how much he keeps bashing them. <laughs> Shitting on white people is safe racism, just like shitting on Christians is safe atheism. They want to insult people, but fear actual backlash. One of the tweets that was trending where he said, Thank you, artists. Know that you are amazing and you should be proud of your work. You are so loved and appreciated. Uh, purple heart emoji. People who spread negativity have already made up their minds, so don't let a few bitches define your worth and your skill. Keep doing what you love. And then somebody said, Hey, what do you think about straight white men? Question mark. Remind us of your opinion about straight white men. Please, Mr. Positivity and love spreader 
To which Uki said, they're just as irresponsible and selfish as your response. To which someone said, bro thought the answer to the bait was racism. Good thing Nijisanji is a black company then, because if it were a white one, you would have already noped out. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just one of these situations now that now that the whole thing that happened with Doki and Niji Sanji, which is still ongoing, probably there's probably going to be more developments, but right now it's kind of silenced a little bit. But everything Niji Sanji do is going to be looked underneath a radar. Now people are looking for reasons to sink the freaking yacht that is Niji Sanji because everyone hates how they treated Doki. And uh, until the whole thing between Doki and Niji Sanji gets squashed, my guess is that people are going to be going down their throats looking for every single reason to be annoyed with them. This one is pretty legit i don't think it's as bad but it's kind of annoying it's one of those things that you probably don't want to do on the prn knowing that hey you're under the radar you might want to chill on the racism towards white people kind of thing <laughs> but it is what it is yuki violetta just being racist towards white people and poking at them non-stop and a lot of people just being okay with it is uh yeah it, it is a thing just 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 by the way you guys white people if you're watching this okay it's you're not being gaslit into thinking that this is not a thing all right tiktok culture i see it freaking everywhere right and this is not me standing in front of the white people kind of thing okay but it's grown to the point where people will out here publicly <laughs> in public dunk and say racist things towards white people in their face thinking that it's just normalized and that it's okay it's, it's gotten to that point it's not okay but it's gotten to the point where people are trying to push it as okay and i can see why some white people would get very you know frustrated and angry that they keep being like the punching bag of these sticks okay i, I get it <laughs> i'm black so so yeah, I definitely get what it means to be a punching bag to jokes and sticks and being called names and all of that jazz. I get that i empathize with it but you know it, it just it just deal with it however you like so guys let's get into today's interview the super insightful one that i've had with rj palmer how it all started and i'll talk about a little bit in the interview as well but i made a tweet so today's video i warned my artist audience about how rapidly ai is evolving and how their jobs are at risk i suggested that some shitter pivoting to becoming an ai specialist to retain job security someone said that i was irresponsibly but i disagree what is your take and then i followed by with appreciate the feedback by the way i know i'm a huge artist advocate i wanted to make sure i'm sending the right message i see ai doing a lot of damage and i don't want any of my audience becoming financial casualties genuinely concerned the tldr is that ai is progressing and advancing rapidly open ai and those guys over there just came out with some program called sora where basically you can type in a prompt and then suddenly you can spit out a video image that looks pretty good compared to what you could have done last year i don't know if it's like the, the dad in me or the uncle me or something like that that the, the older guy in me the thing that i think about is like oh my god my artist homies are in danger they are in financial danger i know people draw for fun and all this jazz yada yada i get it some of you people are but i'm thinking about the people who are trying to keep food on their plate by being artists and i'm like hey guys we need to figure out how to get ahead of this because in five to ten years your passion your job might no longer put food on the table and i go into emergency functional mode i don't go into the whole passionate draw just because it's having fun i go into a very strong hey this is what you need to do to survive. I go into survival mode, adapt or die mode. And I was like, how do we keep the homies safe on these streets? Then led to a debate with people on both sides saying like, hey, yeah, Omni's right. You guys need to be prepared. And some people are saying, hey, Omni, <laughs> my take is that you're an idiot and a malicious actor advocating for artists to put themselves out of a job. Go F yourself. <laughs> A whole bunch of people, big baby rage mad. I'm coming here trying to talk to you guys to get educated. And everyone just like, screw you, Omni. You're an enemy of the people and you need to die. And I'm like, damn, I'm over here just trying to have a conversation to learn because apparently someone had a concern. One of my audience had a concern and I literally brought it up. I could have ignored it. I could have just kept spreading the message. But no, I guess me coming up here to try to talk to you guys to figure out some more information to learn and have some education was wrong. Anyway, Tyler had said, hey, if you're settled discussing this on here multiple times from the outside, I reiterate that you can actually platform some artists, you know, and discuss this properly with more than Twitter's character limit. You bring them up as an ally, be an ally as you have before for others and platform these guys i was like yeah that's a great idea I, I absolutely love this concept i am an ally i've been doing this for quite a while okay i don't draw but every time i see the artist community get dunked on i'm right here being just as rage and pissed off with them as well which then leads to the interview that i had with rj palmer that i'm going to bring to you guys right now it was recorded yesterday i'm gonna put it into the segment you guys buckle in sit down relax you're gonna learn a lot of new information here and then at the end of it i'll come back and give you guys my conclusion on everything before signing out hey guys welcome to the rj palmer interview i'm here with um rj <laughs> oh, who sorry. seems to be 
Say that again, I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say, like, hi, I guess. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hi, RJ. Hey, yeah. look, I wanted to say thank you for coming on board, man. I well, Obviously, before this, this is already pre-recorded for those of you guys at home. We talked yesterday. You're watching this today. Um, but, yeah, there was a debacle. We were talking about the AI community and artists, and people were on left and the right fighting about what people should do or not. And, you know, a lot of people asked me, I said, hey, Omni, can you bring on somebody, platform somebody who's pretty knowledgeable on this subject to kind of help fill in the gaps and the holes in, in terms of what people feel like the message that needs to be spread? Because there's a lot of conflicting concepts and ideas. And the overall message is that AI is a little bit terrifying. So <laughs> to kind of help me that with here and being one of my first people that I have interviewed on this channel, by the way, is the one and only RJ. So now I say hi. Hi. Now uh, you say hi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Would you like to introduce yourself to the... Sure. Uh, to the uh... <laughs> yeah. Um, so my name is RJ Palmer. I'm a concept artist and illustrator from California. Uh, I've been working, you know, as a professional artist for over a decade. Um, the most well-known project you've probably heard of me from is the Detective Pikachu movie, which I got hired because I did all those realistic Pokemon illustrations like a decade ago. Nice. Um, but yeah, I mostly just, you know, I work in games and, and, uh, movies and, you know, whatever sounds cool and fun and, uh, with creatures, you know, you know, I've seen your pictures, the ones where you made the realistic dinosaurs. I mm -hmm. did not know that that actually transitioned into you working with, I didn't know that was the gateway that led you to getting that opportunity. That's so freaking awesome. I'd yeah. seen it flying everywhere at one point in time. That's so Oh yeah. Cool. No, the production designer, um, for, you know, he was like a 50 year old man. Like he'd never heard of Pokemon. He didn't know what it was. And so he's like mm -hmm. researching what do Pokemon look like realistic. Right. And he found like a Kotaku article about my images and he called me up and said, Hey, uh, you want to work on a Pokemon movie? And I'm like, what the fuck? Wow. Like, of course. <laughs> yeah. So wow. that's actually crazy how life works that way. I, cause it, again, like, I didn't know who you were for a very long time, but I've seen your images all over the place. Obviously, yeah. this kind of falls into the place of like, kind of like a little bit art theft, but I'd be seeing your pictures being posted and copy and pasted, and I'd never see the person who actually did it to be on Facebook or Reddit or Twitter. Yeah. And I'm like, dang, this looks really freaking awesome. No, who no, did like it? it? <laughs> and there's no source. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, like, you know, like, like for a number of years, people would come up to me at conventions, you know, I'm selling like my art or whatever. And they're like, oh, shit, yeah. I've seen your work everywhere. I had no idea this was you. It's like, yeah, that's me. Well, this is awesome because now this is an opportunity for I'm sure there's a lot of people in my audience who have seen your artwork and did not know that you were the person behind it. So thanks for coming on board. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, sure. I will. I will add a, a disclaimer here. Two disclaimers here. OK, number one. Um, this is going to be just a very chill, relaxed conversation. Um, there's, there's no back and forth. I'm not here to like argue or fight or prove a point or win or debate or anything like that. I'm here honestly to get an understanding and a meeting of the minds of, of differing points of views of people who fall in this spectrum that I hope have a common interest in preserving uh, the art community. My goal is that I hope that the majority of people really want the art community to continue to thrive, but some people have different opinions on how that looks like. And so that's why I wanted to bring you on board to see if we can create that kind of magic. Um, I, I feel like I feel like there's a storm on the way and there are some people who are like, hey, I don't know what to expect in the next three, five, 10 years. We've got the whole Will Smith Thing going on where last year he was eating spaghetti and now he's eating spaghetti it was probably better but it was fake but with the announcement of uh sora and uh, chat gpt involvements and <laughs> it's getting to a point where it's getting so scary there was a prompt where you can type in a sound effect using you know just your type and it'll create the sound effect the mm. question here it will there'll be several questions but i would say um in general, how would you think it would be a great way to approach this conversation with talking to the art community about how strong AI is becoming, the imminent threat, and what should be done about it? I mean, I, I think one of the, the first things that needs to be like addressed here is like, yes, it's it's coming for artists right now, but it's not just coming for artists. It's coming for like any job you can do at a desk. Um, like, and that's that's you know, like right now artists are on the forefront, which feels like kind of unfair, um, you know, for decades, there was like, you know, all these predictions like, oh, like, you know, in the future, all the, the manual labor is going to be taken by robots. But like, like, you know, everybody thought like, you know, like, like 
skilled professions like art and stuff was going to be like really far off but like that's happening first because turns out building a robot to pick like strawberries is actually much harder than just hiring a person to do that um but you know i guess uh through the magic of of, uh stable diffusion and whatnot like they figured out how to get a machine you know you can feed the entirety of every image that humans have created into it and it's figured Mm -hmm. out a way to like spit out you know facsimiles of those concepts right um and so that's it's very concerning for uh, the art community because, you know, we, we've like, it's already been like a very difficult, pr- you know, profession. Like it's, it's extremely competitive. Uh, most artists don't yes. get paid very well. Like I did a poll on Twitter a year or two ago um, that had like 35,000 responses on it. And like most artists make less than 20 grand a year. Like, and like that's their main income source. And so. So you guys are already taking this huge <clears throat> blow already. And yeah. then suddenly AI is like, Hey, let's, let's keep chopping at, <laughs> let's keep chopping at these guys. This seems like. Like the, you guys are just basically the the front of the line when it comes to a lot of the damage that's being happened in this industry. Well, yeah, and especially like in in regards to concept artists, like what I do, you know, we build so much of like the pop culture and like like the aesthetics for the world. Like every video game, every movie, like that's built on the back of our our work, right? But we get like barely any of the recognition. Um, like you know, you said like you didn't know about like who I was, even though you've seen my art, right? Like, that's super common. Like, you don't know who designs the Iron Man suit in Iron Man, right? But, like, everybody knows... Everyone knows what that looks like. And, like, that, like, why are we not getting this recognition, one, already, and now it's going to get even worse because, like, you know, we already don't get necessarily paid enough for what we're contributing, and now... Uh, you know, the, the AI facsimile is not as good as a human artist, but like it's getting pretty close and it's pretty, in most cases, it's kind of good enough for a lot of our, our, you know, output that we do, like, especially like entry level concept art. Um, yeah. And you brought up an interesting point. Sorry, I didn't mean it. No, no, I was just point. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. go for it. Yeah. The interesting point was like, cause you're right. Like, and this has been a, a problem for a while. Like, like RJ, the identity of like you and the artist who create some of the most iconic things that we see in the world every single day, you know, like you said, like the Iron Man suit and no one's like knowing exactly who actually designed or created that, that concept. Um, you guys literally are the, the foundation for imagery when it comes to iconicness uh, in terms of what people see in terms of the visuals and yet your identity is being stolen from you while you create identities for these companies and corporations and and projects and people it's it's almost as if like you guys are (laughs) transfer over an identity for other people but then now you guys are being punished and your specific identities are being stolen it's it's actually completely fucking ass backwards and I, i absolutely hate it so the concept of AI becomes terrifying because it feels like it is driving that point even further. And so I guess what I'll pivot into next is um, the the concept of AI, I guess, is just this. And you can correct me if I'm wrong here. But the, 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 the short of it all is people believe a lot of AI is, hey, we're a computer, we're a machine. You give us images that everyone else has done, and we're going to put it into our system and eat it up and chop it up. And then when you ask for a prompt, we're going to spit you out everyone's information all at once combined. (laughs) Nothing that we have created on our own. But we're going to spit it out to you. It's going to feel original. But this original concept is actually the amalgamation of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of other people, real live people's art and work. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, and so like like the way you get a lot of like the pro AI guys are going to be like, oh, you use reference as an artist, like you're stealing in the same way. But like, like the way a human mind, you know, collects data and reinterprets data from the real world is not at all analogous to the way a machine does. Like the machine, you feed in the actual data, like the actual pixels go into there, right? Like you can have two of the best artists in the world, sit them in front of the same object. They're going to paint it. Like you tell them to paint it as realistic as possible. It's still going to look different. You have a machine do that. You have two of machines do that they're going to create the exact same image you know um so like you get this this difference between man and machine that's like and you get a lot of uh ai people who are like oh like this is just like the camera like like the camera and like but it's not really like the camera yeah yeah Yeah, because like that's still a tool like with the camera you need to be at the location you know you need to set things up you need to capture the moment right like with an ai you're just like typing in a sentence and you're like 
oh, now like it makes it for you. So like it's not it's not a tool. A lot of people are like, oh, AI is just a tool. It's not a tool. It's like an artificial artist replacement. It is a digital like there is nothing analogous to this in history that can do as much as this can. You know, like we have created yes. like like it is it is taking like all of human information and then creating something out of that. Um, and yeah, you'll have plenty of s examples where there's like overfitting where it does create like very one-to-one -one of like existing objects. Like if you ask, you know, mid journey, like the new version to create Mona Lisa, it makes it like exactly. And that's a problem mm -hmm. <laughs> because like that is, that <laughs> very much shows that like our images are, our, our actual like creations are in these data sets. Like, one to one you get a lot of the guys talking about how like oh you know it's just taking like you know the gist of of these images right but it's not it's actually yes. creating the the real thing Jeez. so we have established here within just a couple of minutes the actual dangers of ai it's a it's a pretty powerful and what you're saying not a tool it's a it's just a powerful machine, not something that's being used as humans to kind of supplement, but more so to replace. And that's the yep. terrifying part is because, I mean, like when you're replacing humans, that's where you reach that dystopian future where there are no humans. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you're, you're, you're that's the part that we don't want to do. We don't want to replace the concept of, of humans with the concept of an AI because that that leads to disaster that's we've seen plenty of animes and movies how that works so now we we're on the same page in terms of how dangerous it is and how well it'll continue to accelerate and accelerate and accelerate exponentially as these corporations spend millions and millions and millions of dollars trying to get it right we laughed at it early on we was laughing at chat gpt we were laughing at some of the old ai stuffs and now as time goes by, people were kind of like, whoa, 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 is this AI now? Now we're now we have like, you know, Elon Musk, who officially stated that they're going to be making pictures that are AI is going to be labeled as AI. We have misinformation being spread. It's getting to the point now where people are like AI is just not a joke anymore. This is something that will hit us and hit us really hard and is evolving extremely fast. That it's I would say we have to respect it, right? Yeah, well, like obviously you know the pandora's box here is open like we we can't put the genie back in the bottle so to speak right like this technology exists um and especially with uh stable diffusion it, it went open source right so like it's not even mm -hmm. gated behind like you know having to have a corporate license anybody can do this very scary very dangerous um, that means everybody's <laughs> yeah. free whatever they want <laughs> yeah and, and they oh, like boy. whatever they want uh like very like you know illegal like child pornography shit don't want that yes. like that's bad yes. um because yeah. like you can you know train a model off of like anybody that you know that you take photos of like yeah. the, the what this Deep technology things. can do is is like really scary shit but like so like that's what we need was we need regulations on this we don't you know, you, you can't like get rid of it. You, I'm, I'm, I've never advocated for like making this tech illegal, but what we need okay. is we need like very thorough regulation on it. Like we need these data sets to be open and public, uh, especially from like, you know, big companies who like, like if Disney wants to like steal all of our shit, um, we need to know what's in their data set. If they're, if they're going to mm. do AI generated things to know if our stuff is getting used. Yeah. Yes. We need transparency. Like, like, kind of like i mean when the crypto blew up and people didn't realize that there were wallets and in the wallets you can see the actual chain of command of how people kind of move their money but without that transparency then we would have had a bunch of scammers getting away with everything so when it comes to ai we need to we almost kind of need what seems like to be some kind of um i'm not a, a, a say crypto ethereum exchange but we would need to see the data to know that what is being used to create said information because without that transparency then it sounds like people can just basically steal and get away with it without that regulation correct yeah well and like especially you know obviously like you design like a dude with a sword or whatever right like there's a million yeah. dudes with swords how do you prove like oh they used mine right so yeah. you need to be able to have your like this data needs Jesus. to be public facing um all data sets need to be like opt in uh or, opt in or out sorry opt out by default like uh yes. you need to be able to opt into these things if you want your images like you need there, there needs to be some sort of like i don't know how you even begin to build a system like this like at, at some government level there needs to be like a repository where it says if your image is like available to be used in data sets or something like right. 
and that's what we yes. don't have and like government yes. doesn't move at the f speed of technology so like we're <laughs> exactly that's what i was going to actually say that was my next point rj so i agree with you on this like, government regulation super crucial super key this is definitely a genie out of the bottle situation where it's kind of like we're already here how do we tackle it next best steps and for me you probably don't know me because this is your first time interacting but i'm a bit of a pessimist <laughs> yeah <laughs> overall sure. when it comes to the concept a lot of people are pessimists now but when it comes to the concept of the government or corporations or regulations or entities with people with money who control these things millions and millions and millions of dollars in, in my opinion these people are lobbied they're bought out they will slow things down on purpose and i don't think they care about the the little guy i don't think they care about artists and i do feel like this will be a situation where whoever has the most amount of money will control what is occurring and whoever has the most amount of money will most likely do their best to keep as much things as possible from going as slow as possible and delayed as possible. So my fear is that when someone communicates to me that, hey, Omni, the best thing that we need to do here as artists is, is yell at our government. And I think to myself, they're not going to do shit. They're just going to sit on their thumbs. They're, they, they do not care about you. And my, 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 I know what needs to be done for that regulation, but I have no faith in that process. If we're trying to rely on the government, I just think that's a, that's a, that, that goes nowhere. So I think in the meantime, in the interim, what my suggestion was, which was a bit uh, controversial, was I believed that I, I had mentioned that I think that artists should probably equip themselves with AI knowledge and actually get hip to what AI people are doing to steal their, their technology and creating it. I suggested that if you are an artist, that you should also probably become very, very, very create a craft and become strong when it comes to AI. Like it's, it's almost as if like, uh, like think of the government and the government gets cyber hacked by some, some, some dude from wherever, and then they hire him and then they pick up on all his practices and they learn how to guard themselves better. For me, I figured if you are an artist right now and you are under attack by this program called AI, that it would be very, very helpful for you to actually learn said programs, learn how it steals your information, learn how they apply it, and then use that in a way as a tool to become yourself not only just an artist specialist, but an AI specialist. Do you do you agree with that notion? How do you what do you feel about that? So not really. Um, so like like there's sort of this. Um, this narrative that's formed by a lot of the AI proponents where they're like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, it is a tool because it takes me so much work and effort to, like, figure out how to do this. But, like, I, I've messed around with generative AI tools, you know, like, anytime they have a new update out or whatever, like, I'll s see what it yeah. can do just to see how worried I should be about, like, you know, my own career, right? <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> and it's, it's, it's really, like... It'd be really, really easy for any artist to use these tools if they wanted to. Um, th this notion of like, oh, you need to become an AI specialist. Like every artist who knows how to like composite images in Photoshop already is like effectively yeah. could be an AI specialist if they were using sure. these generative tools, right? Like, I don't know if you know what photo bashing is, um, but for your audience, yeah. photo bashing is, is uh, like, it's when you can like combine photo elements, you know, like say you want the arm from this, you know, turtle or whatever, and you want to put it on this crocodile. Um, you combine those photo elements and then you paint over it. It's, it's like, um, Photo, it's not photo manipulation because you are like creating mm -hmm. something new. You're not, mm -hmm. and you are like doing a lot more actual painting. Um, and so if you wanted to photo bash with AI generated elements, that'd be really, really easy to do. Um, right. And so like I, this, this concept of like, oh, you know, you better start learning how to use AI. Like we already are equipped to do that. We just don't want to because like, that's like um, there. There seems to be like like mm -hmm. a miscommunication out there because like artists actually enjoy making the art, <laughs> um, and like <laughs> <laughs> there there's so many guys that are like oh you know like automation comes for everyone but like why would we want to automate away jobs like one of the few jobs that people enjoy the, like the process like like yes. I like to draw so I get to do this for a living like I I'm doing this for a living because I enjoy it you know like it's not. Mm art for me is not a nine to five. Like this is just who I am. And I've figured out a way to like get people to give me money for being Got who it. I am. So as I, I, I have heard that sentiment being tossed around. And I think that was one of my blind spots because um, I, 
I too have, uh, well, when I started, I was, I'm in accounting. That's just what I used to do before I became a YouTuber. And accounting is definitely one of those jobs that AI is coming for, if not has already started establishing and attacking. Those, mm -hmm. All this new accounting software program and, and, and everything, they're creating flow charts. When I was in my company, um, we created a program. And this program removed the need for about four or five of our staff. Um, mm -hmm. we, we literally were asked to work on a way to make our accounting processes more easier to do and automated. And then after we created it, <laughs> they're like, well, wait a minute, we don't need you guys anymore. We've just created the program. Yeah. And so as an accountant, I've kind of already felt that I was, well, interestingly enough, as one of the people who helped push that software that I had to uh, basically do. The boss said, hey, work on this. And I was one of the people who understood it the most. I think a part of my job retention was because I knew how it worked in case it broke kind of thing. And the people mm -hmm. who didn't were the ones who had no idea what was going on with it, but they were just kind of like, yeah, it, it is what it is. So so when I, you're approaching this and you're talking about the passion and the love of it, I 1,000, 10,000% uh, identify with it. My worry and my fear here is that artists are already struggling. There already is already a struggling industry, and there's a lot of people who want to do it part time, full time. They're already struggling. They're already dealing with art theft. They're already dealing with people not, you know, stealing their identities and copying. And it's getting worse and worse. And from my point of view, I'm trying to figure out how do we keep money and food on the table for the artists who are already starving. And well, I mean, maybe there's something that you can bring some perspective to, because I know people do it for fun and I know mm -hmm. some people are doing it for a living. And I know that creates two different perspectives for the ones who are doing it for work. How would you how would we communicate that? How do we how do we prepare them? How do we equip them with what they need to for this incoming wrath of AI that's going to try to, you know, take away their already low income? And, I mean, and honestly, being pushed other places. Yeah. Like, like honestly, the like the real solution to any of these problems um, is unionization, right? But like, yeah. there is no like nationwide union for like you know the the games industry, and there there are like film unions. I'm in one of them. I'm in the Art Directors Guild. Um, nice. But like, we're still like these these are still not necessarily like currently equipped like uh, like especially in games nobody is equipped to build a union to protect artist jobs um and right. like to your to your point about like how you should become an ai specialist like okay so great like you know you become an ai specialist like that you can now replace an entire team of like say you know 15 concept artists or whatever with one yes. art director and the generative ai tool because like they can create all this shit that it spits out and then you you know they're also an art director who ha has these art skills and they can clean them up and they can like create the work of 10 to 15 people right um yes. so yeah. now there are less jobs in general like if you do this you are taking jobs away from like you know your peers and so yes. that creates like a scab like effect like you don't yes, you don't want yes. people to do this so the art community has become very at least you know on twitter and like like these sort of spaces yeah. um we've become very much like oh don't fuck around with these things in a professional setting you know like like if you do this like yes you can get a job probably and retain that job but you are taking money away from like your friends and peers so i have a fear rj that and again this is my pessimistic you know, still bleeding through this, right? <laughs> sure. I have a fear that when it comes to just human nature overall, that we have a overall scab mentality. We're all crabs in a barrel, uh, pulling each other down to make sure that if they can't survive, then other, everyone else falls kind of thing. And I feel like this is kind of definitely at play. I, part of me, because it is my audience, I'm trying to make sure that they are not the crabs that are being pulled down to the bottom of the pot. I, I don't sure. want to create a mentality where everybody is trying to replace each other's jobs. I don't want that. And I think I agree with you on that 100%. I also mm -hmm. don't want my audience to, to, to not be proactive and then be one of those people who get replaced because I my, my concern is that the mentality, like you said, the scab mentality does not disappear. Someone's gonna find someone who does this AI. They're gonna find the cheaper person. They're gonna find, these corporations have no care about the community they just want the profit margin 
And I, it's such a conflict of what is morally correct versus what's going to actually happen to somebody financially. And trying to find the middle ground of how do you, again, continue to bring money and food and revenue to the table? So how do you continue to follow your passion when people are doing what you're doing for cheaper and replacing your jobs? It's such a it's such a catch twenty twenty catch twenty two to for self preservation in this kind of setting. It seems like you're taking away other people's self preservation. Sure, it's, um, and it's so complicated. No, like, and it is, and like that's you know obviously unionization would go take you know great steps towards alleviating that right um okay. but outside of like having unions that can like be strong against these companies these money guys right like yeah. the, it's always the money men who are like the enemy of the art right like um <laughs> the enemy of so, everybody man <laughs> yeah they are <laughs> that's terrible <laughs> um but out like outside of a future where we can like catalyze unions forming Right now, like the only major weapon we have is to like create this public outcry against these companies when they get caught for this shit. And like, yeah. like theoretically, you know, like there have been instances where game companies are, are get caught with this or like playing with it a little bit. And like, there's such a fan outcry that they like do reverse this at least publicly. Like as far as we know, like they're still using it internally. But like publicly, there there has been at least an attitude to be like, hey, you know, this isn't cool. Um, and like you see this in the music industry where like musicians have way more power than like 2d illustrators and stuff. Right. Um, yeah. musicians have this, this ability to like shut things down. Like, uh, stable diffusion was working on like a, uh, I, th I think it was called disco diffusion or something like they had a, mm -hmm. a version of generative AI for music. But on their page about it, they specifically said that it's trained on copyright free music because they're scared of the music industry because the music industry like will fight them. They will like shut them down. But artists don't have that. They they're not worried about us. Oh, man, that's the problem, right? There's we don't <laughs> we don't there's not enough power here in the industry for us for people to, to, to take take us seriously. And so, you know, it's interesting. I um. I had seen a an article, and I don't know if maybe you would have caught this, and I don't have it on me, I apologize. But there was an article about a, a guy who was an artist who also kind of got into the AI industry as well, and he created a anti-AI <laughs> poison. Have you heard of that um, concept yet? Are you, are you talking about Nightshade? I think it was Nightshade, yes. Is, is okay. that, that thing? He, yeah. he kind of figured out how to poison the well. And I mm -hmm. felt like maybe that was in order to poison the well of the AI. And again, you can enhance this on me, but I believe he figured out a way where he can feed poison to these AIs who steal mm -hmm. material, and then it creates completely different new concepts. And I thought that was so awesome, right? Because yeah. he's creating literal anti-AI <laughs> uh, attacks. These are defense yeah. mechanisms, but that he could only could have garnered and received through the actual, <clears throat> you know, practice and study and learning of how AI works in itself. So for me, that felt like one of the things that I was trying to communicate is as to why it might be very important to become very immersed into AI, because I'm not necessarily trying to communicate that, hey, equip yourself with AI so that you can get rid of your people. More so like mm -hmm. you should really, really, really figure out how open source AI works and how these people and what everyone is doing. So that if you want to join the war and the fight and the battle, you can be more equipped with the, I won't say tools, but what's happening here. That was an example. But how did you feel about that nightshade? Uh, that so so nightshade, well? um, I, I believe the it, it's a uh, research group. I believe they're called the Glaze Project. Um, and their, their first thing they made was called Glaze. And the way uh, I, both Glaze and nightshade work is they, they basically create like a... A distortion field on top of your image so the image looks mostly the same if you look up close yeah. like there is a little bit of like different like sort of de 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 degradations on the image um yeah but that yeah. that's what tricks ai so like before glaze it would just like it would make your image not readable to the, the training data like to be you know usable yeah. training data but with nightshade the way it works is it like actively changes like the perception of what's in the image so like if you have yeah. like i think one of the examples right is they had like a, you know a painting of a cat or whatever and if you put nightshade on it like it's going to tell the uh, it thinks it's a dog and like yes. this is good um i don't think like 
it's important for artists to become like machine learning researchers. Like that's what these people are. Like these, these are not people who were getting into the AI game to like, you know, become a like generative AI users. These are people like these are machine learning researchers that are trying to create a solution for artists to defend themselves. See, So this is kind of like a two different industries coming together for protecting said yes. the artist this is not something where the the artists themselves need to become these guys but they should be acquainted with what they're doing like like for example how we surf the web and we have like you know vpns or we have you know antiviruses yeah. i don't need to become an antivirus expert <laughs> exactly in order yeah. to basically keep a virus from okay that that makes more sense i think i that's something that i will take a step back from i think i jumped the gun on it it was more so of a I was telling people that they need to equip themselves by learning it specifically, mm-hmm. but maybe this is more of an ally partnership with people who are, I would say, aware of the AI and how it works, yeah. but also how dangerous it is, and then working with these guys in order to continue to protect the community. Yeah, like we basically we need artists because like artists, you know, are are you know we're we're interested in tech, but we're not usually like tech like you know actual developers, right? Like that's th- yes. those are different fields. So we need those people, like you know the the idea of the tech bro. We need the good tech bro. We need them the good tech to bro. be. That's how our, I okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I like that. That that one makes more sense. I don't think. So when I, I told people like, hey, I think you guys need to definitely become a bit of like an AI specialist hybrid. No, I think continue to focus on the arts because that's what's mm-hmm. most important, but also ally yourselves with people in the community who also want to protect you as well. Okay. I, yes. I'm glad that you established that with me as well, because I think that was a major driving point between I was like, hey guys, learn this, do this because, you know, and this one feels good because it also feels like not all people who do AI or create these things are trying to destroy the world or replace people. There are people who are trying to, I don't know, chat GBT. You know, there are certain forms of AI here that are not replacing humans that are our tools, uh, like you said. Chat and GPT are... is going to try and replace you. Like there, there are yes. like, like that. Yeah. Like open AI, I think is like an aggressively evil corporation. <laughs> Um, yes, yes. Like, yeah, they are they are actively trying to replace jobs. Like, um, also the Stable Diffusion, uh, I forget, uh, Stability AI is the name of their company. Yeah. They are also actively trying to, like, eliminate jobs. Like, their CEO, total shithead. Uh, he, so he's even got any, on like, record. AI that, <laughs> is there any good AI at all? Like, are we, if it says AI in the name, do we just say fuck AI? Is that the, is that the mentality? Or is there anything with AI that's actually Yes, redeeming? okay. Because so far, so, I feel like it's just been just, like, shit. It's just like hurting people nonstop and it's, it's creating this dystopian future. I, I think something that, yeah, something that needs to be like more understood by like lay people getting into this debate is AI. When, when people are talking about this, they specifically mm-hmm. mean machine learning, machine learning, generative AI, which is stuff like, okay. you know, chat GPT or stable diffusion where it is creating like images based on what already exists. Uh, for steal, many, many by years, by yeah. yes, by, by using images without permission, um, yes. Uh, but there is versions of AI that is not necessarily bad. Like, you know, for, for decades, right, like AI in video games means something diff- completely different. Like path fa- pathfinding AI is a completely different thing. The word AI has just become poisoned by this generative AI slop. Um, that now, like, you're mm-hmm. getting, like, you know, strays caught. Like, they used machine learning um, for Spider-Verse to do, like, the lines on the face, right? So they had artists draw out, like, templates of where they, you know, they should have the lines go on the face. And then they can yes. use the, the computer to create in-between frames and, like, smartly add the lines to the 3D models, right? That is not the same as, like, this evil generative AI. Like, that is a tool made by people to help artists. Generative yes. AI is not that. <laughs> kind of like like Photoshop or some of these other tools that we use to kind of take what yeah. we're already doing and then help make it look cleaner or smoother or curve or filters. <clears throat> that's yeah, like, like stuff to that's... that end, like like AI upscalers, that's not the same mm-hmm. thing as like like you know, generative AI. And like that that's yeah. just something that like we need to like have more like public understanding of um because people are gonna get like shit on for using an ai upscaler or for like using different types of ai like you know having like a smart ai create like you know whatever like like you know uh enemy like uh behaviors in in video games like that is a completely different thing 
<laughs> so no, this, as, you know, and that's why I have you here because I I'm just an average dude, to be honest. I'm a, an advocate of the artist. I'm pretty generally well aware of what's going on, but I think like having you here on this platform is so huge because I have an audience of people who are maybe like I have no idea what's going on, or I have no idea how to fight it, or I have no idea what's right or wrong. the the ignorance around this is is so strong. But I feel like a lot of the propaganda that gets kind of pushed, especially by these tech bros, is AI is the future, you know, and AI is amazing. AI is great. And we yeah. all love AI. And that's the that's the the top level thing that's being pushed down everyone's throats, not realizing, no, uh, this AI stuff that you're seeing is absolutely terrifying and it is taking away jobs left and right. And if this keeps going at this scale, you're not going to like what this future is. Well, they might not care. That's another thing. These consumers, I, the consumerism yeah. when it comes to people, when you look at Pal World or you look like Hogwarts Legacy, you look at these 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 you look at Kanye West coming out with a new album you have the yeah. Yeezys you have people who are controversial in nature and and you have people standing out to fight against what they what they stand for or what they have created or power was a great example because a lot of artists felt like they might have there was some plagiarism going back and forth and that created a tobacco and yet power world is one of the biggest selling games of all time or Hogwarts legacy was one of the best selling games of last year Kanye is still selling out gear and it's 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 like so frustrating because it feels like that these techniques that corporations are using to steal from the artist will bottom line itself. And it, it feels like it's an inevitable. And it only feels like as an artist, the only thing that we can do is try to delay or buffer it. But I can't, I, I'm still, and this is again, pessimistic. Ami still coming out, RJ, but I feel sure. like five, 10 years later, what we're trying to fight for now will evolve regardless. And so I guess, how do we, how do we protect the artists now from the five, 10 year later future? How do we protect yeah. them? Well, and so like, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you. Like I'm also, I've also been very pessimistic about this. Like as soon as, um, uh, uh, Dolly two came out like, you know, a couple years ago. Right. Um, as mm -hmm. soon as like the day that came out, I was like, Oh shit. This has evolved, like, because I was keeping an AI on generative <laughs> AI, like, art stuff for, like, the last several years. Um, back in, like, 2020, there was, like, Art Breeder and, like, really, like, limited, you know, stuff. And, like, it's like, oh, this is kind of a neat tool. Like, this could be a neat jumping off point for artists to get, like, you know, rough ideas, right? But then suddenly, like, oh, no, like, this looks way too good. <laughs> um, and, like, a lot of people are like, oh, you're, you're just being, like, a doomer. Like, this is not this big a deal. And then, like, cut to six months later and it, like, levels up again. And people are like, oh, shit, this is a big deal. Um, <laughs> but, like, so, like, I, I do agree that it is, it is a concern. Um, and, like, so I'm, I'm of two minds. Like, obviously, unionization okay. is, like, that is the main path forward it sounds like for... It yeah, like that, that is the main way that we protect ourselves um, and our, our creative output. Like we need to create unions in games like now. Um, yeah. The other way, the other way this could go is like, it might just be a fad, man. Like, like, you know, mm. a lot of these images, they look very samey. Um, and I think AI video is going to be a much bigger deal, a much bigger concern than AI images. Um, the Sora, the Sora that popped yeah, up. Yeah, like Sora, yeah, like okay. Sora looks way better um, than I think a lot of people were expecting. Because the AI video a year ago was like really jittery, really bad, and now suddenly Sora yeah. is like a huge leap up. And if yeah, that love, keeps. Yeah even a similar trajectory like and right now like you know there's a lot of smoke and mirrors in the ai dev space like people are, are like trying to figure out whether or not sora ai was like very specifically trained on specific videos because i, oh, I definitely know definitely for sure for marketing yeah. purposes it definitely because yeah. when you when, when we download if we got it and we used it and we did a prompt there's no way of spitting out that kind of stuff there's just yeah. no way right? we, and, yeah. and so like that that sort of smoke and mirror stuff but like how long before it does get really really good because like you've seen the um yeah. like the ai generated like you know like like what you do like talking head youtube videos right like people yes. are doing that sort of stuff like vtuber space Quibble like but with yeah, with Pop real yeah. like that shit's gonna be scary right but like i think yeah. that's gonna be a much bigger threat than necessarily generative just images right i think okay. a lot of people are kind of tired of the the gen ai look right now 
Um, and I don't know if this is just me being like, you know, super like, like naive, hopeful, optimistic, <laughs> right? Um, like yes. I, I have the pessimistic view. I have like the optimistic view where it just kind of like fizzles out. Like this will evolve into something that artists can use as a tool because it's no longer such yeah. a, a threat to us, like, uh, like a, an existential threat to our career path. Um, and I, I think that would be a, like a fine future, a fine way for this tech to evolve where like it's not one guy taking 15 jobs from his peers. Now, like yeah. it's just something that like, oh, we can use this, like say we, you know, want like, you know, this drawing that we've done of this arm or something in a different angle and it can figure that out. Like that could be a handy tool. There's a lot of actual use cases for this for artists. Um, just so long as we, it like, if it you know steps away from being such a threat to our jobs and also i want the data sets to be ethically sourced like i want to know what's in the data set that we're using and i want to make sure that it's not using stuff from people who did not want their stuff in there got it so it sounds like it sounds like rj to to, to summarize to protect we need transparency right mm -hmm. when it comes to people working on art we need transparency. We need open source. We need to be able to see what they are doing and then hold people accountable in case they are doing exactly what it is that you're expressing. That's 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 number one. Mm -hmm. um, and at like for example, Twitter labeling things as AI seems to be a great step in the right direction of of, of, of uh, making sure that people understand. I, I'm concerned you, about that. Um, oh, you're concerned I, about I'm, the labeling? Of I'm I'm concerned about the labeling because like yes, if it comes like if it is like a like a plugin or something with Mid Journey and there is like a yeah. direct like if you want to say like post to twitter and then there's a label and that's the only way the label can show up on an image what i am concerned yeah. about is like if it's a self-tagging system or if it's an auto tagging system for artists to get false positives on their work you know or oh, false no. negative <laughs> oh god i didn't even think about that yeah, like so that that's <sighs> that's a major concern because like I don't do it, I don't use AI in my work, right? But like if I post a painting and like Twitter has decided that it's AI, I'm gonna catch <laughs> a bunch of shit for no reason. I'm not gonna lie, dude. I when I saw your uh, when I saw your art, I was like, I was like, how does I was like, there's no way that a human made what you made. When I looked at it, your, your art literally looks like what uh, AI tries to to mimic. Yeah. When I was watching your your, and I'm like. Man, this is so good. There's no way that someone actually, like a human being, drew this. And then you get tagged or false flagged for just being too good. That would be yeah. absolutely miserable. And then, and then you know, with misinformation on the internet, people don't, they only believe what they see in the first line. And then exactly. that's it. There's, just no, there's no looking into it. So now someone can false flag you. And now you are now being mislabeled as a person who works with AI or believes in AI. And, and you, there's nothing that you can do. To remove yeah. that notion because it's on the internet. It's just it's that's horrible. It's like a that, dangerous world we live in, man. E even without that system, that that's happened to a few artists because, like you know, there are artists that like their the work they were making for years. Like this is what the AI <laughs> was trained on. Like all the anime titty pinup artists, I feel really bad for them <laughs> because like Stable Diffusion was made specifically to like off of their artwork and is targeting them. And now like people yeah. think they're using AI and their stuff has just looked the same for a decade. Like like that's not fair. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. That does suck. So it's just it's such a large encroachment. It sounds like again going back the what what needs to be done and maybe the message that what I'm getting from here. And again, I I really appreciate you coming up on here and enlightening me and the viewers about how these things work and also addressing some of like the concerns that as me as a person who is obviously terrified of AI but also terrified of the future for the artists and trying to figure out where they pivot from here. It seems like what we need to be pushing um, is number one trying to figure out how to create transparency in the space here when it comes to, to to art when it comes to movies or videos any of that we need to know is this ai or not and if people can hide behind a veil that's we're in dangerous territory we need to be figuring out transparency and it mm -hmm. sounds like number two which you've mentioned maybe three or four times is unionization i do not know how we do that <laughs> but it sounds like that is something that we are steadily needing more and more as time goes by is that form of protection because without it we're just going to get steamrolled yeah um if we're not actually combined in terms of mind and and, and counts we're going to get steamrolled um I, there's there's no um there's no we know how valuable we are as the artist community we know how valuable we are but we are not gathered enough in numbers and strength and forces to be able to say that we are that force that is creating what's being created. Like you said, the Iron Man suit, we're, we're not there. So 
it sounds like uh, here's my here's here's one of my last things that I'll talk about. We can wrap up because we're already 45 minutes in. I didn't even realize. <laughs> sure. What would you say is the best message for people like me or people who are kind of confused on what to go with AI? What's a good message to push out to to the casuals and the normies when it comes to AI in terms of what needs to be done going forward and how we can be helpful and allies for the art community? How would we what's the best message for that? Um, I, I think something that uh, a lot of well-meaning, you know, anti-AI people who aren't artists do is they will like accuse somebody of being like, oh, this is AI. I think before anybody ever does something like that, you should consult like a working artist, be like, hey, is this AI um, before you start mm -hmm. witch hunts? Because creating a culture of witch hunts is only going to hurt artists going forward. Um, yeah, and that's already happening on in spades. It's very oh yeah. yeah yeah. So no witch hunts, no witch yeah. hunts. Well, like yeah, don't don't do witch hunts. Like yes, you can accuse people of using generative AI, but make sure that you have like a good amount of support and evidence from somebody who knows more about this first. Um, I think yeah. another thing that people need to to do is like just like be conscious uh, like like you know if you find out something is using generative ai you know maybe don't buy that thing you know or like if you've already bought it maybe don't buy the dlc or whatever right um <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like just just try and uh you know keep yourself from from uh you know like mm -hmm. like feeding into the the corporate like you know uh pipeline of like them allowing them to make money off of using this tech Gotcha. And I think I lost myself on the image. Probably my camera burning out. I, oh, no unfortunately, I don't have an. Unfortunately, I don't have an AI version of myself to keep going. So yeah. <laughs> assume though, right? But okay. That's going to be built yeah. in by default. <laughs> exactly. You didn't realize this, by the way, RJ. But I have been AI this entire time. This conversation <laughs> is completely made by algorithms, and yep. you have yeah, fallen into my trap. God, catfishing <laughs> is going to be horrible in the future. Oh, podcast AI. Oh, yeah. good lord terrifying uh, imagine like chat gpt creating a podcast conversation that goes on and on forever they already had the whole thing with seinfeld where they were doing yeah. things on twitch and they were creating oh, yeah. they're just gonna create like podcasts of like celebrities you're like oh i want to listen to a podcast like by such and such celebrity about this topic and it's just gonna make it for you it's like that sounds bleak man i don't want that i don't either bro i i'm I, again, and I'm going to wrap this up. I asked some questions on Twitter for people who are like, I told them that, sure. yeah, you're coming on if they had any questions. There's a lot of them here, but a lot of the questions, it seems like we've already gotten into. So what I'll do is like, if you kind of want to have that space or look into it, I'll probably address it in the future of the video because mm -hmm. we've already, I'm looking at the questions and you've, you've knocked them down one by one. Okay. But, um, yeah, let's, I guess we can just wrap it up at this point. And I just want to say, yo, RJ, dude, you have been absolutely uh, uh, spectacular and amazing, man. You've brought a lot of enlightenment to, to my views here. I think you're educating. I think what you're doing is absolutely amazing. I know you've been doing these um, interviews for a while now. And I appreciate you coming through here to help me to push that information to my audience so that people can be more educated on what's happening and figure out how to move going forward. I, I am a person who, again, I am a very protective uncle, dad type figure. And I, again, I always just want to focus on my community, just being able to live and eat and prosper. When I see dangers coming right here, I become a little protective. And I, I think I go into that, that mode where I'm like, you know, just literally keep making money, keep figuring out how to keep food on the table. If you have passions, if you have it, I don't care. You know, it's just like, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that sure. is the second thing. And I think that's just the protective nature in me because I've seen a lot of, friends who have pursued passions and and now they're in a place that they kind of regret because they didn't you know equalize it with passion but also foundation of um seeing the reality the harsh reality that is humankind and what will turn this into i don't want people to be hopeful i don't want people to look at the situation and be like it's going to be okay because i would rather be safe than sorry and i want people to feel not scared but I want people to be alert, sure. and on guard, and proactive, as as opposed to five years later, and now they have to become reactive. And I feel like what you're providing for me helps to create that middle ground of me scaring the shit out of my audience with, hey, here's the reality of what's going on, and this is what we need to do. You've given me answers mm -hmm. as to how we move forward, which I was not aware of, and I, and I think the audience, too, appreciates you so much for providing that. 
Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, and, like, I totally, I'm sympathetic to the whole, like, like ethos of get that bag. But, like, also, there are some things you shouldn't do to get that bag. Like, that's all I'm trying to say is, like, <laughs> like be smart about it, you know, like, like, like be mindful of your peers in the space like yes like make sure that you are safe and you are able to survive but like don't do that at the cost of like destroying the livelihood of all of your friends gotcha i 100 percent agree with that we got to take care of everybody otherwise we all fall apart and yeah. we don't want that to happen all right. Well, yeah. RJ, I'm going to let you go, man. I appreciate you. I think I already took up more time than I wanted from you, but I appreciate you um, extending that time and being available, man. I, and I, it's nice to just chat it up with you. We're, we're both kind of like strangers, but also it's just, I don't feel like you're too much of a stranger, the, the, your ideals and beliefs and what you talk about and kind of like how you've grown up as a human being. I feel like when you, when you meet people who are artists and then you see their art, you can kind of feel what their journey was or how much time and energy they've put into it so you feel like a familiar soul but i just want to say thank you for coming on board man and and talking with me and uh yeah if you have anything else you want to say is there anything that you want to tell people do you have any projects that you're working on do you want me to direct anybody to anything that's going on in your life or are you just chilling uh, or what's up oh uh, yeah I'm, I'm just you know working on on shit man like i don't know just you know go go look at the you know my twitter account arvelis at yeah. on twitter is a-r-v-a-l-i-s you know you can find yes. it whatever just google rj palmer yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my my portfolio website is rj-palmer.com um i don't know man just uh, be 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 cool to each other man. Like, i don't know unions go yeah. unions yeah all right, got you. I, I'm gonna I'm push the message out there for you, man. Hell yeah. All right, awesome. Well, thanks for coming aboard. I will wrap it up and um, yeah, we'll just call it a day. Thanks so much, man. And yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll talk to you later, okay? Awesome, thanks, man. All right, bye. So yeah, guys, that was the RJ Palmer interview when it comes to the AI community versus the artist community and what you guys can do to protect yourselves and be an ally. I think that I was kind of on the mark when I was saying like switching over to AI specialists. I think what should have been rephrased was instead of you as an artist getting yourself muddled into the AI waters, that you should work with people who are familiar with AI but are anti AI. Not every person who is an AI is trying to steal your jobs. In fact, there's a lot of people in the AI industry who are trying to protect artists. There's just there's an evil side, like he said, and there's a good side. There's good AI and there's bad AI. There's the bad AI <laughs> that steals from you and everyone and takes all that information and pretends like it's theirs. And then you have the good AI that is actually tools and supplements. And you got people out there with AI knowledge who are figuring out ways to be anti AI. And that was the thought process that I had. Combine yourself with your own drawing, with the weapons of the enemy, <laughs> put them together, and then figure out how to protect your shit. Unionization seems to be pushed a lot by RJ. I don't know how to create that. I don't know how that works at all, but if it ever becomes a place where people are trying to push that to happen and create, I will do my best to be an advocate and make sure that gets generated. Regulations, laws, lobbyists, lawsuits, all this stuff. I'm still a firm believer that, that the government sucks. <laughs> they are not your allies. They are lobbied out. They are bought out. Okay, corporations is going to make sure that artists continue to suffer as much as they've already been suffering. They're just not coming to, to their aid. Okay. I have no faith in that system whatsoever. So when everyone says like, Hey man, you need to speak to your local gut. No, no, they don't care about you artists. All right. They just trying to get the bag and make money. And the people with the bag and the money are these big corporations who are trying to invest in open AI and all these jazzes so that they can cut out their, the middleman and cut out the people. Okay. I, I see what's happening in the big grand scale. There's no way, no conversation is going to make me have any kind of faith in this government. Things move in any kind of timely matter. I know that we still have to go through the process, but I am very, very, very pessimistic of that process. And last but not least, this is just a message for those of you guys who've been responding and replying to me on Twitter. For those of you artists out there who come <laughs> with this rage, this frustration, this passion, this anger that turns into you just basically calling everybody idiots, I have to freaking tell you, okay? Real talk, you are an enemy of the state, okay? You are doing yourself a disfavor. You are so goddamn annoying. I get it. You love art and you want to protect the homies, yada, yada. I get it. But you've got to realize that a neutral point, if you want to win this war, you already stacked. You're at a disadvantage. You don't have the numbers. You don't have the power. And if you come off in this way where you just basically hate everyone who doesn't automatically understand your ideals, you're just going to shove more people away from you. You will probably create enemies just by being this kind of figure. Do you have people on the fence and the neutral not understanding what happens and to see one interaction with one artist being like a super rage mad angry person <laughs> and calling people names on the internet and they're like, 
this guy is insane. I'm going to go vouch for AI. And that happens all the freaking time. OK, so stop doing yourself a disfavor. Me, who is an advocate, who is an ally coming here to create an understanding, to create a meeting of the minds. If you don't come in with the understanding that you want to try to educate people on something that they're not educated on, if you don't want to seek to educate and you just want to be angry at everybody. I, I, I honestly, truly believe you are going to lose a lot of people in that process because no one wants to listen to that kind of communication. Are you justified? your frustration anger yes but does it do you any good <laughs> no only harm chill the hell out bro i'm not taking that one back okay don't be an asshat okay if you come to the conversation to the table like rj then we can create moments like this where we are educating people properly and sustainfully and peacefully okay but if you want to bring the pitchfork and you want to be that guy sure make more enemies unnecessarily hurt your own craft that's that's on you but yeah as i said in the interview if you guys listen to it all the way i loved Mike talked with RJ. He was so educated on the subject. He was so passionate about the subjects. He brought open a lot of things that I didn't even think about in the past. And we we had some few uh, a lot of disagreements, but we were kind of basically going back and forth like tennis, trying to figure out how things worked out. And he kept filling the holes. My only concern still after the interview is that I just don't know what's going to happen to the little guy. For you guys out there who are the little guy who are trying to make a living, who are trying to become passionate about this, who are trying to become bid and become lead concept artists and work for movies and stuff i am afraid that if it's something that you put all your eggs in one basket in this industry right now that you will have no basket and no eggs okay so <laughs> be prepared have a backup follow your dreams keep doing and following this passion that you like don't switch to what i said which was an ai specialist where you just simply just do ai <laughs> but become very aware with it and equip yourself with the knowledge of what it does so that you can protect yourself in the future and also work with people who are very well versed in ai who are your allies and are trying to create tools for mankind not replacements for mankind two separate things here one good keep them close to your chest don't confuse the tools with the replacements these guys want to protect you from this but if you put the entire umbrella of everybody in ai into one then you're you're fuddling your argument you're misguided you're misdirecting and that's exactly what the enemy wants but yeah guys i enjoyed the interview again this is rj palmer okay you guys can come over here and follow him at at Marvelous. Uh, he's just a marvelous guy. <laughs> Bars and come look at his uh, work. He's just really good. The fact that he got work done with Ubisoft and Tech to Pikachu just by drawing and get caught on the internet. It's so absolutely freaking awesome. And I hope one day as AI continues to evolve and artists continue to fight that we can bring him back on the show. We can talk about more ways of protecting the artists in this community because yeah i would like to put my energy there but all right guys that's all i have for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed this nice special segment and uh yeah i'll catch you next week i'm going to play some uh splatoon 3 side order i'm going to be playing it all day today and tomorrow <laughs> but we'll talk about the news probably next monday i might have some secret videos coming up for you too as well on the weekend i'm working i'm working for you guys all right i love you guys thanks for listening if you haven't already could you just drop a like on the video tennis record means that you made it to the end of this video or that you enjoyed it or that you liked it or if you like the interview subscribe if you guys haven't already and i will catch you on next episode okay stay safe on these streets these streets ain't safe brush your teeth don't get halitosis and yeah catch you later peace